Hello, everybody. Oh, blimey. <laughs> Good you. Sofa's quite soft. You'll need a winch to get me out of this one. <laughs> uh, Michael. Yes. Um, now, uh, the first thing I should say to you uh, is uh, welcome back. You've just been in Australia, I believe. I was, came back last week, yes. Uh, do you have a good time? I had a lovely time. I spent some time with the uh, person who is going to be the graphic illustrator for this play, Eddie Campbell. Which leads me into... Um, now, Eddie... Uh, drew this image of Charlie Peace here. Uh, and Eddie is going to be an essential part of the making of this project. Uh, uh, and I I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about the play, but could you, in the doing of that, just tell us how you made this relationship with Eddie? Y yes, indeed, yes. Well, this? I've been fascinated by Charlie Peace since I was a child because my grandmother used to sing a song about Charlie Peace. And she told me that he was a famous burglar and murderer who lived here in Nottingham in Narrow Marsh. And um, as I got older, I looked into Charlie's life a bit, and I, that didn't seem to be true. Actually, he was from Sheffield, he was caught in London, and he was tried and executed in Leeds. So I know we're very good around here at, um, at uh, grabbing hold of any celebrity criminal we can get our hands on, but I, I thought that my grandmother was probably making this up. But no, it was indeed true that when Charlie had um, shot his uh, lover's husband, he hid out here in, in Nottingham, under a pseudonym, of course, in, in Narrow Marsh. And so this play, you and I talked for a long time about trying to do something about crime and the, the theme that sort of fascinated me, because I've done quite a few true crime things for, for the telly, and, and the thing that's always fascinated me is why am I so scared of crime but so fascinated by criminals? And Charlie was one of the big celebrity criminals of the 19th century because it, 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 very soon after his capture and his trial, he became a legend. His life was turned into a legend. He was represented um, in uh, Penny Dreadfuls, in waxwork shows, and in a style of theatre which we don't know much about now, but which you and I have, 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 have rather based the formal aspects of this play on, which was the travelling fairground the theatres of the 19th century that would come, you know, they'd come to Goose Fair. Um, they, you know, they were once a year they'd come into town and they'd do a series of very popular plays and a very few of these texts exist an, an, anymore. We've got the bills but we don't know what the, what the texts were like. And Charlie Peace plays were a staple of this kind of travelling theatre and so that was what um, the, 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 the sort of formal springboard was. But as far as um, my friend Eddie's concerned, I first came across his work in a mammoth graphic novel called From Hell, which is written by Alan Moore, who's one of the great graphic novel writers. It was illustrated by Eddie, and it's about Jack the Ripper. Of course, Jack the Ripper, actually, he sort of jumped to number one with a bullet 10 years after Charlie Peace. Before then, Charlie was by far the most celebrated criminal of the late 19th century. And um, I just, reading that, I just thought that this work had a, had a real visual sense of the, the late 19th century, and it was rather how I saw in my mind what I wanted this play to look like. Well, I, I spent a lot of time in Brisbane, where my wife's from, where she's living at the moment, and, and I learned that Eddie Campbell, although he's Scottish, actually lives in Brisbane, and over the years we've become very good friends, and so when you wonderfully asked me to do a play about Charlie Peace, then I wanted it to look like like Eddie's work, you know, and so we've managed to incorporate that with what I th hope is going to be rather an inventive set design as well. Yes, the, the designer of Charlie Peace is also designing the kite runner, um, uh, Barney George, and he also designed Diary of a Football Nobody, and anybody who saw that will know that uh, he was a very clever in his use of projection, uh, uh, and it, it's ideal, I think, for the way in which Eddie's work will be uh, integrated into this production. Um,
Something else that, that's important in the telling of the story, it seems to me, is the music. Yes, uh, uh, yes. Could you tell us a little bit about how you've approached integrating the music? Into well, uh, two, two things about that. Is that. One, that I assume, I don't know for a fact, that, but I assume that music was a very important part of these, these travelling shows of the, the late 19th century. A place for the people. But also, Charlie himself was a very fine mu musician. He, um, he uh, lost several fingers on his left, left hand and devised a, um, a one-stringed fiddle that he used to play, used to perform on. He was professional on the halls for, for a while. He also used to use his violin case as the, uh, the place where he kept all his burglary tools and his ladder that he would climb up into, into porticos with. So it served a double function there. But there's descriptions of Charlie playing the fiddle behind his neck, between his legs. It sounds like Jimi Hendrix. You know, he really was a virtuoso. And um, so it seemed to me that obviously that music's got to be an important part of this. There are a lot of songs in there. And the songs are, are derived either from um, ballads of the time about Charlie Peace that I've, that I've tracked down, um, but also adaptations of, 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 of songs of, of the period as well. But I want the company, you know, I, w I want the company to be like a fairground company of the 19th century. It's obviously often family companies, you know, and they, they play many roles, but they'd also be versatile in, 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 in their, the fact that they could play music as well. Um, one of the key elements of the policy of Nottingham Playhouse uh, uh, has been new work, uh, and it's been a long-standing commitment that this theatre has made, and it makes it very distinctive nationally that we produce so much new work on a stage with an auditorium of this size. Um, I, I'm just going to ask you, I, I, you're not ready for this question, uh, but... Uh, not been ready for the previous ones, but... <laughs> I can, I can busk it, I hope. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's not about pork pies, is it? I'm a, yes, I'm a great lover of pork pies. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, we can finish. Uh, no, I just want you, as a writer, to give a sort of sense of what the value is of having a theatre that, that uh, puts new writing at the heart of its programme. Well, we get a bit emotional now. I can't tell you what it means for me, as somebody born and bred and living in Nottingham, to be a part of this, this anniversary season. I've been coming to this theatre, not since, not since it opened, but since I was about 13, 14, so probably seven or eight years after it opened. Uh, I've lived in Nottingham now most of my life. It's been a part of my life. It's been a part of this city's life. Um, I've done three plays before for Nottingham. One was a community place, so not actually in this, in this auditorium, and I've done one play with you in this auditorium. And, and well, it just feels wonderful to be back on, on, on this stage. So good for, you know, that, that, that this, and it's such a great season as well, not just the plays, but all the ancillary, I just looked at the programme, all the ancillary work that's, that's going on this year, including, of course, which you haven't mentioned yet, the 15th of May, the uh, Lost Plays. Oh, uh, show, is it? Um, which is in the programme. No, so, no, well, look, that's a flannelly kind of answer, but it's absolutely true and, and well meant. Thank you very much. Thanks, Charles. Thanks, everybody.